you have probably heard of James Randi's $1 million challenge. The challenge is a $1 million paranormal test offered by the James Randi Educational Foundation for those that can demonstrate paranormal supernatural powers under scientific scrutiny as well as mutually agreed upon protocols. The James Randi Educational Foundation is open to any paranormal claims such as dowsing, astrology, ESP, etc. as long as it is testable and safe. Otherwise, such claims will be automatically rejected. The challenge is divided by two tests, the preliminary and the formal. The preliminary is a pretest in which the claimant will demonstrate some glance of paranormal ability before he or she enters the final test called the formal. According to JREF, however, no claimant has made it to the formal because not at least one of them was able to pass the preliminary test first. The challenge is depicted by JREF followers and modern day skeptics as scientific and valid for testing paranormal claims. However, a critical question arises, is the challenge really valid and scientific? The answer is mostly no and I will argue statistically why that is the case. The problem with the $1 million challenge is that it suffers a fatal statistical and methodological error called a type 2 error or simply false negative. It is a type of error in hypothesis testing in which a test fails to reject a new hypothesis when it is actually false. In other words, it is a statistical test that fails to detect a real effect. The probability of a type 2 error occurring depends on at least three factors. One, the significance level of the test, which is the subjective criteria that determines when the p-value is considered statistically significant enough to reject the new hypothesis, which is a skeptical hypothesis, and conclude that something interesting is going on. Two, sample size, or the number of trial sessions, is also important because the larger they are, the more likely it becomes for the test to detect something and reject the null. And most importantly, three, the magnitude of the effect size being tested. In statistics, a small effect size, meaning weak or not that much effective, is harder to detect than an effect size that is large. This is because larger effects tend to have more efficiency than that of smaller ones. Because the smaller ones are less effective, the only way to more likely detect them is to run a large sample in the test. Now this is where the problem for the challenge arises. Randy's $1 million challenge requires you to achieve at the end odds against chance of at least 1,000 to 1 for the preliminary test, whereas the formal, as stated by the Skeptical Foundation, requires you to reach even more unlikely odds than the preliminary, possibly a million to 1. By contrast, standard scientific criteria only requires an odds against chance of 20 to 1 or 100 to 1 at the 5% or 1% significance level in order for something to be statistically significant and consider evidence. It is clear that the million dollar challenge is demanding more and more conservative than what scientists would consider sufficient evidence in the research. Of course, the accusation I'm throwing right now might receive criticism that I'm just bringing up an excuse to damage control the claimant's failures in demonstrating the paranormal abilities. So, as a result, I'm going to justify what I'm accusing here. The evidence that shows that Randy's million dollar challenge is using unfair odds compared to that of standard scientific criteria lies in the total number of people that applied for the challenge. According to JREF, about 600 applicants have applied around, I'm guessing the 1980s if I remember correctly, with the addition of 350 claimants ever since. Now, statistically speaking, using the standard scientific criteria of rejecting a new skeptical hypothesis at either the 5% or 1% significance level, we will expect 5% or 1% of the total applicants passing the preliminary test by sheer luck as false positives rather than through paranormal abilities. So, from let's say 900 applicants, we would expect at least by average about 45 or 45% and 9 for 1% of the applicants to pass the preliminary test by sheer luck. However, in reality, no applicant has passed the preliminary test ever since. The chances of no applicant passing while the tests are using 5% or 1% significance level for rejecting the skeptical hypothesis are actually very statistically unlikely, which is strong evidence that the challenge is testing paranormal claims with double standard odds against chance criteria. Now, another problem I have with the challenge is the fact that it does not address the effect size that is being tested, which makes false negatives even more likely to occur. This is a significant problem because if a paranormal ability is so small but real is being tested under let's say 10 trials, chances are the test will fail to detect the ability and reject it easily as being non-existent when it's actually real. This is because the test is not based on proper statistical power, 
which is the probability of the test more likely detecting an effect. A proper scientific test will be conducted with a statistical power that is at least 80% or above, because then there is a 20% chance of committing a false negative error. Therefore, a proper scientific test would r first run a power analysis to determine how much samples or trials are actually required to detect this effect that is being tested. This is especially true to effects that are tiny or insignificant, especially those of certain psychological experiments like the average 32% melanosis hit rate effect size of the Gansville. As a matter of fact, let's use the effect size for the Gansville as an example. Suppose JREF sets up 15 Gansville sessions where test subjects have a 25% probability of getting a hit by chance while the effect being tested is the paranormal 32% hit rate. What is the probability under the 32% paranormal effect size of achieving odds against chance of 1000 to 1, which is 11 hits, and a million to 1, which is 14 hits? According to my total statistical analysis, the probability of getting 11 hits, 1000 to 1, under a 32% hit rate is 1 in 416 and 1 in 4 million for 14 hits, which is a million to 1. Now multiply these two odds together and you reach an even more unlikelihood of a 32% psychic hit rate passing both tests in a row. It is highly more likely that the psychic 32% hit rate will fill the JREF 15 Gansville trial tests. This is because the JREF Gansville is not using the proper samples for testing the 32% claim. So, if a claimant's paranormality is real but not at all significantly effective, then the claimant will most likely fail. Even if the claimant managed to beat the odds against chance of 1000 to 1 in the preliminary, he or she will have to score even better to get a million to 1 and claim the $1 million prize. As the JREAF said in the rules, they are not responsible for covering how much samples and other resources can be used in the test. Furthermore, the conditions that the claimant wants in how the preliminary and formal test should be must be first agreed upon by JREF and some other party. The fact the challenge suffers from type 2 errors, false negatives, and is not using proper statistical and methodological procedures undermines the challenge from being scientific at all when it comes to testing paranormal claims properly. The James Randi $1 million challenge is a huge disadvantage for paranormal claims that are small rather than large as those observed from X-Men type movies given that the tests do not use proper samples fair odds against chance requirements, etc. Not to mention too the fact that the tests are run under more conservative methods of rejecting the p-value for statistical significance than those used in standard scientific testing and failing to conduct a power analysis. Although the challenge is not being conducted under proper conditions, the challenge is actually valid for those paranormal claimants that claim they can move or levitate things with their mind, read things with near 100% accuracy, and other paranormal claims that can be observed by the human eye or through common sense. When it comes to testing small effects like microcyclokinesis that involve the use of statistics, however, the challenge is invalid and should refrain itself from testing such claims since it does not meet the proper criteria. And that is why James Randi's $1 million challenge should not be regarded as scientifically valid. Thanks for watching.